All right. Good morning, good evening, good afternoon, wherever you are in the world. And so we're going to um, be talking about you have the power to change. This is part three. And we're going to look at some things that are a little bit out of the box or things that people don't want to talk about that are relative to our change. And that is, um, let's look at the relationship dynamics. Um, by the way, I have a relationship class that's going on for the next month. Um, we're meeting tonight. Um, every Wednesday we meet. Uh, if you want to be a part of it, um, just inbox me um, on Instagram at Interfaith Wealth Builders or um, go to my email address, um, interfaithwealthbuilders at gmail.com. And it's going to be ifwbuilders at gmail.com to be a part. You can um, also uh, cash at me at ifwbuilders um, to let me know that you want to be a part by putting your email address and name in um, the note um, part of cash app when you're sending um, the money. The class is um, $40 and you get a book with it. If it's just one time you're going to come in, $10. Recordings are also available for $10. Right now, we have four classes that we've already done. Um, it is um, private. And so that means that you can get in a private group setting where you get the information to help you create a powerful change in your life. And so relationships are in most cases, something that people don't talk about. Um, they go about their lives and um, they keep doing what they've been doing. Um, the other thing that is very taboo in relationships is when there's been infidelity, either um, there will be a great hype where information is being um, given out and um, exposing the person that did this, such as some of the people, you know, um, in the media now. Um, and then there is um, the man or the woman that is silent about um, the extramarital affair that um, they were a part of, meaning that their spouse created. So we have men and women that actually create <clears throat> these scenarios where they um, go outside of their um, marriages. And um, I looked up statistics because I think it's important to look at these things. And I'm going to give you the site that I went to, which is, um, it says divorcelovetoknow.com. And these uh, people have done um, statistics on men and women um, in the infidelity area. Um, um, and, and the reason why I chose to just go on and talk about infidelity, number one, is because, you know, we're relational people. And that means that um, throughout our lives, many of us have thought that our relationships were going to remain monogamous. The unfortunate thing about that is, is that one or the other may not be able to uh, overcome what has happened in um, the breaking of vows. And um, that, that means that the marriage is um, going to be broken because when you break vows, then you break the marriage. And this is a spiritual part. So when we look at infidelity, um, the site that I gave you, and I'll put it in uh, the description box, you know, um, it's saying that men and women pretty much measured up in the same capacity. It says, at first, the stats seem to be low. 22% of men, <clears throat> excuse me, men and 14% of women cheat. But other studies have 45 to 50% of married women and 50 to 60% of married men have sex outside of the marriage. So it seems that it's pretty close. The idea that I want to present is the trauma behind it, right? Um, because both um, men and women are actually creating the scenarios of infidelity, um, I think that it's a need to teach about judgment. 
I mean, um, when, when you look at yourself, you see who you are. But then when you look at your partner, you see who they are. And in the relationship, as you get older or you grow wiser, what you're going to begin to do is you're going to not effortly um, see that there is a mirroring image, but you're going to uh, begin to consciously uh, understand that there is likeness in the person that you chose to marry. And that means that if the, the husband will cheat, so will the wife, right? And, and that's in most cases, if the wife has not cheated, then she thought about it because we don't, we don't get in relationship with anybody but ourselves. Um, the ability to marry someone means that even when you think that you have nothing in common, there is secret commonalities that has not come out. And it could be because um, the marriage may have, you know, been um, brought into uh, manifestation through lust. A lot of people don't think that because they marry uh, before a pastor or, you know, some type of religious um, leader, um, they believe that it's in the sight of God. But this is not always true. And when I say it's not always true, it means that you and I may have needed to consult God on the marriage, right? To make sure for yourself that this is something that God had wanted for you. Now, a person that's not consulting in a spiritual um, devoted lifestyle, meaning that you have a practice daily, um, they can miss it. Now, other people can come together because of karma and they're gonna see um, the issues of themselves in the other person. And it's gonna form an idea of dislike. This is a relationship now. It's gonna form an idea of dislike over time, especially if it's karmic or if you came together simply because um, it was lust. You, you will find that nothing can be uncovered concerning your likenesses because there is something fleshly in the way of your discovery. So in the statistics, you have something that helps identify that we all have issues. If we could lay down the sword and begin to communicate and talk to one another, we could see past the faults. The other thing with infidelity is that it is not your problem that your, your uh, partner cheated on you, it's theirs. Because on a, a higher level, spiritually, what happens is, is that the breaking of the covenant means that they're breaking something within themselves. That means that they're giving themselves um, a level of spiritual punishment that they're going to have to go through because they broke the covenant, the agreement between you all. Like um, there's, you know, business colleagues, we make an agreement. Um, and in that agreement, we follow suit with what we're going to do for the business. So is a marriage because we made a commitment. And I find uh, myself through studying, because that's what I do, study behaviors. Um, what's happening is the person is not able to be committed because of challenges from their childhood. They may have never seen a committed relationship. They may have seen a committed relationship, but there was domestic violence in it. You see, they may have seen a committed relationship, but they also seen um, that the parents were, um, you know, uh, very conflictual. There was no happiness. And they make up within their minds that they're not going to be in that type of relationship. And then it kind of comes into the relationship that they marry into. You see what I'm saying? It comes into the relationship because it was a problem that they consciously ascertained through the influence of parents or even leaders, you see, because there's leaders that influence others in sexual matters. Now, infidelity, 
can be changed. And it's all a matter of the person actually seeing that they have no control in this area. And we're talking about both men and women. You know, if you had this situation to come up and you feel guilty, um, analyze your feelings and don't go back and do it again. Because if you, you go back and do it again, it's a trap, you know? It's a trap because you already put your foot in it and now it's setting you up. Whereas the more you interact with that area, it's going to trip you up and exposure is gonna come. And I'm going through the process rather quickly, but that's how it goes down. Because if you are married and you continue in it, reckless behavior becomes a part of what you will see in yourself. The other part, the third party um, will encourage it because it's um, a fight to get you. And some women and men love that someone is fighting for them in that aspect. They may not have realized that the husband or wife that, you know, they broke in covenant with um, is and has been fighting because they've been there. You know what I'm saying? Or, yeah, you know, you can have problems at home, but it's better to find a way to work it out because you're not just dealing with the person that you marry. You're dealing with spiritual powers and what goes around comes around. Because this is not clear, I think that it's necessary to, you know, for people to know you may not be happy and you may not be able to find happiness today because you actually played a part in taking happiness away from someone else. You may have called, um, caused um, someone to go through traumatic circumstances within themselves. Um, I was posting on Instagram today about PTSD because yes, a young lady spoke in our leadership meeting uh, last night saying that uh, the PTSD diagnosis came up um, through the military, you know, back in World War um, I or two, or, you know, when they uh, went over and um, um, I can't remember the war, I can see it, um, Hiroshima, that war, those wars kind of like that, but anyway, um, she was speaking that that was a diagnosis that came up in those times in the 60s, people that were coming back from war would be diagnosed and the 50s, so on and so forth. So PTSD has become a diagnosis for individuals that have um, taken on stress to the place where they can't return back to stress less or non-stressful. Um, it is called post traumatic stress a syndrome because it's been operating and working in the individual's um, system, their body for so long, they don't know how to go without it as with someone that drinks or, you know, even to this liking, someone that could have a sexual addiction. And these um, um, addictions or ideas, um, the traumas, they need to be met through um, psychological healing, which is spiritual. But then there's another need. If it's post-traumatic stress syndrome that is coming on from the situation that the person also um, get psychological help. If someone has a sexual addiction, they need psychological help. And it's nothing wrong with you conferring and um, going to see about that because what happens is, is that in the infidelity area, someone else is being hurt by that. And if you have children, they are in that. A lot of people, you know, they believe that if they tell their children, this is how things are, that's enough. But it's not always enough because you are responsible even for that child that you brought in the world under that covenant. And that means that just you telling them um, that, situations are not right and that's why you 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 got to do whatever you got to do it does not fare well because we have generations that have been listening to this kind of dialogue that are growing up with this dialogue and when you see your son or your daughter in this same position 
It is because it's a cycle repeating. So here we don't have a judgment on men or women. What we have is statistics that are given through divorce, loves, no, dot com. Um, oh, divorce, love, to no, dot com. Why? Because there's a way to end the recklessness, to end um, the recklessness that we may bring on others or the pain. It is called thinking before you react, becoming disciplined, and responding only to what is necessary within the commitment that you made. And surely if you feel that that's not what you want, divorce is, you know, available. However, some people battle with the fact that they stepped out of their marriages and they feel guilt and shame. If you feel that, then you need to analyze your feelings more because you need to find out what has been hidden in your consciousness that has you going in this capacity because this is the time where your inner self is saying, it's time for you to resolve these issues. Your resolution is not in picking up where you left off with someone else or in a marriage. Where you left off in a marriage means that there's time for you to find what part you brought and you need to fix in that marriage so that when you move forward, you're not repeating a cycle with the next relationship. Also, you need to search yourself because if you have offsprings and they have been a part of this circle, your children will need to know why. They need to understand because within the man or the woman, what happens is, is the re repetitious cycles begin. The infidelity cycle is no different than the drug addiction. You see, a drug addict's daughter or son is very likely to come up in that same pattern. And if it's not with drugs, it's going to be some type of dependency that they lean to, such as sex. They may not feel safe unless they're having sex and that they need someone there, you know. And this is a... Um, a place of insecurities that need to be filled by no one but self. When you need sexual fulfillment all the time, there is a need to reevaluate and maybe get psychological help because you may need some answers that can come from someone. Um, the other thing is you may need to um, look at areas of your family where there was codependent situations because when you need something and you can't make it without it, that is a sign of a codependent trait, which is addictive. And some people will say, well, I never, you know, I never had drug, you know, addictions in my family. No one ever drink, drank, but you may have had people that you know, smoked marijuana. They may have um, had obsessions. Uh, they may have had compulsive traits, which means that, you know, the, the codependent and the addictive behaviors go way out. So let's bring it back home to the statistics. And the reason why I'm talking about it is because we're all relational, you know, here in this world. Families matter. Children are dealing with things that they shouldn't have to, to deal with. I mean, I did a report about two weeks ago and I looked at st statistics where children from 11 to adult age were becoming um, mentally diagnosed because of marriage dysfunction. So, I mean, what, what would help maybe for us definitely to begin to look at different ways of starting relationships, such as setting goals, knowing that we're um, 
in the same capacity, we believe in the same things, whether it be money, um, knowing that we can create a house together, a, a world of happiness together, um, setting goals um, on what we're going to do if we're going to build a business together, if we're in agreement to it. Because here in the lust factor, we just get together because we feel like we're in love. But listen, 10 years from now, 20 years from now, uh, love does not pay the bills, especially when love has had habits that are not conducive to um, your growth. You know, if love is only loving, it's not going to pay the bills. Love has to know that they are with somebody, especially if it's someone that's going to make differences in the world and their genetic um, um, lineage. They're going to be ambitious, not so much to the place where they are forgetting about their families again, but the family is included in the ambition. You see, so these are some of the reasons. Anyway, you know, my email address is um, ifwbuilders at gmail.com. You know, look at my classes and um, look at, you know, some of my Instagram posts, posts at um, I, Interfaith Wealth Builders. And thank you for listening. Thank you for making a choice to um, agree with yourself to see the power within you because you have the power to change your life. So you guys have a blessed day and I will talk to you later. Bye-bye.